This video demonstrates two methods for calibrating a digital thermometer. First, with ice and boiling water. Second, with our flute dry block calibrators. Both methods are easy and fast. However, the water method has inaccuracies that are unknown caused by variations in altitude, atmospheric pressure, and water purity. The dry block calibration method provides a better measurement because we're working with instruments that have a known accuracy. Let's experiment with a couple of different ways of calibration. We're going to use the common methods here of ice, water, and boiling water. Um, I've got everything set up here. We're going to do a quick check with these and then we're going to compare against our dry wells and see how we measure up. I've got the unit under test sitting in an ice bath and right now you can see we're measuring approximately 0.6 a little bit off from where we want to be. So now let's uh, make a quick adjustment get this dialed into our ice bath You can see here, I've made a quick adjustment to the ice bath, We're right at about zero. Now I'm going to move over. I'm going to try this at the boiling point and see how we're doing on the linear side uh, going up. All right, and it looks like we're bobbling around about 95 and some change. So let's make a quick adjustment on the top end. You see here I've made the adjustment on the top end now. Got it close to 100 degrees Celsius. So now what I'd like to do is repeat this. But this time we're going to use the 9100S and the 9102S and see how we measure up. Now what we're going to do is use our 9100S and 9102S and see how we compare. Just a few seconds ago, you saw me make the adjustments using the water method. Um, but now you can see we're a little bit out of spec again. Again, those common methods um, can net you some errors in the neighborhood of several degrees. The benefit of moving to a dry well is that these are calibrated, certified, and you know the uncertainty you're working with. Boiling water depends not only on the elevation, but also barometric pressure, ice water, and building an ice bath, there is some technique to it, and the purity of the water will also make a difference. So let's make another adjustment to the thermometer now and uh, see what our results are. I've moved uh, right over into the 100 point because that's kind of where we left off. And you can see here from the boiling water to the dry well, we're almost uh, four degrees and some change high. So what we're gonna need to do now is make an adjustment again, but this time we're gonna bring it back down. So you can see now I've made the high side adjustment. And again, we've pulled it back from the boiling water, which was reading roughly 104. And now I've brought it down to right at 100 degrees Celsius. Next, we're gonna move back to our zero point and see how we measure up. All right, we've allowed a few minutes for the, uh, the device under test to kind of come down to zero and stabilize. Uh, we're actually right on with what the uh, dry well is reading. So again, we had to make a slight adjustment of about four degrees at the top end versus the boiling water. But it looks like at our uh, low end, uh, we're pretty linear. And so we know at this point, we're within 0.25 degrees C of our reading, which is well within a type K uncertainty. And again, we're confident even at the top end now with the adjustment uh, that we've got an uncertainty of 0.25 there as well. So again, you can see the difference between using water technique versus a dry well. Again, the big benefit here is you're working with a known uncertainty versus an unknown. To learn more about our dry wells and how they can help you improve your sensor measurements, please visit us at www.flukecal.com.